Hello, I'm Daniela. In today's video, I have a fun slow stitching project to show you. Now this project is open-ended and there's lots of room for personalization. Today's video is the first and I'll create a series of these birds throughout the year with different themes and topics. The charming bird that we're going to make today is a simple bird made from simple shapes. The shapes include the body, the wing, and then anything else is up to your imagination. You can add a feathery tail or a tail made with fabric or embroidery floss or skip it altogether. You can add the beak making it short and stubby or long and pointy or anywhere in between. And then you can add the eye and different elements to your bird to make it really come to life. At the end of the video, I'll show you my variations on this bird and how I'm going to put it together into a fabric book. But I also take the bird and then I embellish around it with different fabric collage pieces and some stitching. In this video, I'll show every step of the way in real time, so stay tuned and follow along. So here's one example of the little charming bird that we're going to make today. With this one, I cut out a fabric wing and fabric tail and then I just embroidered just the shape of the body but you don't have to do that you can do it all with fabric if you'd like and I want to show you some variations before we get started now here's another example of using this charming bird in your work here I have mirror images of the birds kind of like love birds they have a fabric body and the fabric wing and I used a little lace for the tail. So there's lots of variations. There's always the basic form of the bird shape with the wing. I always add a beak and an eye and there are variations on that as well. But from there you can really have fun with it, embellish it, give it a little personality. You don't have to stitch the eyes. You can add lots of stitching. There's just one thing I always tend to add a heart when I do my birds on the little scenes that I make and I like the way that looks. At the end of the video I'll show you a lot of variations that I've done and there are more to come. I'll continue with this series making the birds with different themes. Besides the holidays they'll be like a party bird and a night out bird and a birthday bird. So let's get started. The first thing you need to do is decide on the size of your bird. Now I choose the size of my bird based on what I'm going to do with it. If I'm going to make it stand alone, it can be any size, perhaps something like for an ornament on a tree, in which case I can just make it whatever size I want and it's stand alone. But if I want to put it on a backing, I'll choose my backing first. This is just a piece of an old quilting material and this is what I'm going to use today. It's just a old piece of denim that I cut into like a page and I have an assortment of these birds made onto pages and I just want to keep adding them to make a big stack so that I have a lot of birds with personality and I'm going to use them eventually in a book just of these little charming birds. So I start with my piece and again that piece can be any size. So from here I know I want my bird to be approximately this big for this page. You can make it any size you want. You can make it fill the page. You can make it tinier and have different size birds if you want. When I make my template, I just took a little piece of cardboard and I just sketched a kind of teardrop shape, almost a paisley shape because it's not symmetrical. It kind of bellows out at one side. And for the wing, I made it a little more teardrop shape. Now with the wing and the body, if you make it on a piece of cardboard or paper, whichever you prefer, you can flip it around the template itself so your bird can be facing different directions as well as your wing. So there are lots of options within this. The reason I make a template is because I'm going to make a lot of birds approximately the same size and I can modify it from here. So what I do after I have my template and if you want to not make a template you don't need to either but I have my Frixian erasable pen and now I'm going to choose my fabric. So here I have some fabric that I've already cut and I keep this in my stash so that when I want to sew or stitch I have some pieces that are at the ready. Now I can decide at any time and then change it however I want the wing and the body to go. They can be, the wing can be above, it can be down below, it can even be right in the middle. It's really up to you and the effect you're going for. I find when there's a lot of contrast between the wing and the body, it's really very fun and bright. And I love colorful fabric for this. I'm sure it can be done with neutrals just as easily and it will have a different effect, 
but I happen to like the really bold prints. So these are some that I've already cut, but the procedure for me to find how I want to choose my fabric is really simple. I just go through my stash. So I keep my fabric scraps in these little buckets basically based on size. It needs a good thorough going through just to reinforce that they're in the right bucket, the scraps. But I just pick out two colors, one for the body and one for the wing. And I basically decide those colors based on what size scraps I have. So in this case, I picked out three pieces of fabric with the two colors. I have this teal checkered fabric and I have this yellow checkered fabric. So based on the amount of fabric I have, this is going to be for the body and this for the wing. And then I found this other yellow, which I just happen to love the way that looks with both of those colors, and I'm gonna use this for the tail. Now you don't have to use fabric for the tail. You don't have to use fabric for any of the pieces, but I'm gonna do that today. So all I do is I take my fabric, and I always start with the body, and I decide which way I want the bird to be facing, to the right or to the left. It doesn't really matter, it's up to you. And if I want him facing to the right, I'll make sure that my, the rounded part of my template is facing to the right on the right side of the fabric. Now when the fabric has a print, I can basically decide how I want that fabric and template to go so that there's direction in the print. And then I'll just trace around. I like to do my checkered print kind of on a diagonal. I just think that's very interesting. And so here I have my body and I'll just cut that out. And if I wanted to, I could fold the fabric over and cut out two at once. You can also use your pinking shears if you'd like, your decorative scissors to cut this out just as easily. So I'm just trying to get the shape. It doesn't have to be perfect. And with this particular Frixian pen, when I iron it at the end, it'll remove all of that marker. So that's another reason it doesn't have to be a perfect cut. I don't have to cut on the lines. So from here, I can decide right now how I want the wing to go because that will determine it based on the fact that this has a pattern. So I think I want the wing just above the body. So again, I'll look for where I want it on this pattern and I'll trace out the wing. Then I'll cut it out. Now I don't like to have pointy edges on my wing or on my bird. So I tend to round those edges and sometimes I exaggerate it a lot more. The rounded edges give a really fun shape and it's a little more whimsical when the edges are rounded but it's very effective with different shapes as well. So now I'm starting to see my bird form. I like to make the beak out of stitching. I just find working with a small little piece of fabric to be a little frustrating. But if you wanna make an enormous beak on your bird and you're comfortable working with the fabric, that's a great way to use it. Now for the tail, I don't really commit to the tail just yet. The one thing I will do is just cut a piece of fabric and keep it around my work surface so that I can think of what I'm going to do with it. When I stitch my fabric, I do like to not stitch down right at the tail because sometimes I like to tuck that fabric underneath that edge. So I keep that in mind. And when I'm stitching, that's when I'll start to make my decision on what type of tail I'm gonna use. So for now, I'm gonna set aside my templates so that I can use them again in the future. And I'm gonna start pinning down my bird. So now I can decide where I want my bird on my little background here. I can, of course, center him, but I think I'm gonna put him on the side here, flying this way, because I like to add something of interest here with scraps of fabric collage when it's done. So for now, I'll just kind of play with how I want the bird, exactly where I want it, and just put a pin through both fabrics. Doesn't have to be perfect. That's what makes these birds kind of interesting is that they're unexpected. They have unexpected features. I have my embroidery floss. I chose the color orange for the beak, but you can use any color and that's the beauty of it. And then I have my two colors that coordinate with my fabric. And then I have a black thread for the eye 
but I can also consider maybe putting a button as the eye. And this is something I do at the end because I really like to get my stitching down and see what personality develops on the bird. So I like to start stitching the wing first. Not only does that anchor the wing, but it also anchors this body fabric. So I'll start right here where the two fabrics join up. And you can choose whatever type of stitch you want. A blanket stitch, I'm just gonna use a little straight stitch. And I'm gonna try and keep my stitches neat and neatly spaced together, approximately the same size. I'm about a quarter of an inch away from the edge of that fabric, which is a little further than I normally go. It doesn't have to be that far. I think it adds a little bit of interest here and a little pattern to see that distance. And I may come back and add another row of stitching. And that's the beauty of this, is you just kind of decide as you go along how you want this to look. And sometimes it evolves over time as well. The personality of each bird really comes through between the colors that you use, the fabric that you use. So I'll just continue stitching around. And one of the reasons I like the smaller stitches is it just looks a little neater for these curves. The straight lines of the stitch when they're in quantity and very small can actually look like a nice curve, a rounded curve, even though it's made of straight lines. So I'll continue around. I removed that needle because I no longer needed it. I have enough stitches to hold my wing in place and because it overlapped with the body, it's also holding that in place. So the stitching is a little difficult, not really difficult, but a little tense, a little thick because I'm going through not only the denim, but the two layers of cotton. But now that I've finished all my stitching through both the body and the wing, it'll be a little easier. And it is noticeably easier. That one layer of cotton of the body, in addition to the layer of the wing, really does make a difference, particularly on the feel for stitching. And I like to stitch first through both layers because it anchors it down, but I also like that feeling when I'm stitching of then stitching through just those two layers. It's kind of like a reward for getting through the utilitarian part of this design. So I'll continue stitching all the way around this wing. And because of the fabric that I chose is kind of a light color with a little bit of that yellow, the yellow of the embroidery floss really stands out and becomes its own little pattern, its own little area of interest that draws the eye. So whatever stitch you choose, whether you choose a blanket stitch or a stem stitch, split stitch or a straight stitch, whatever stitch you use to anchor down your wing will really add to the character of your bird. And that's what makes it charming. So I'll do my last stitch to anchor that wing and then right on the back, I'll knot it off. Now I'm gonna salvage whatever's on my needle here because I'm going to use this yellow thread to stitch the tail. And now's a good time to start thinking about that tail, what I wanna do. So I'm gonna create like a little fan shape on that fabric and I'll just flip it over here because this is a solid fabric, I don't really have to be concerned with the direction of the fabric or anything of that nature. There's no pattern to contend with. You don't have to use this fan shape. You can use a rectangle and you can even use embroidery floss and I'll show you that later on. So there I have a tail. Now I can put it down like this and it's a very large tail but it echoes that rounded shape. So that's kind of of interest. But what I want to do is pull that tail together right at the base here where it's going to attach underneath that bird body. So I'll come back in here with my yellow thread. I have a knot at the end and I'm just going to do a straight stitch through the end here 
doesn't have to be perfectly spaced. I just want to stitch all the way right to the end. And once I get to the end with my stitch, I'm going to gently hold onto the fabric and pull the thread. And that gathers that tail. And now it will fit underneath the body quite well. So I'll pull that embroidery thread tight. Then I'll stitch one stitch through the rest of that fabric tail to hold it in place. I'll just pull that needle through just to anchor it down. And I'm going to snip it a little further away. Now I didn't knot it because I don't want that bulk. But I do have enough thread here that I can place it down. And it's not going to unravel. In addition, I'm going to stitch over it when I just stitch my body and that will really hold it in place. But once I have it in the spot that I want, and it doesn't have to go underneath, it could easily go on top of that body if I want. I just like the way it looks tucked underneath. So I'll hold it down and just use a pin to hold it in place. Now getting it in the right position is crucial here because you don't want it to look wonky. Or maybe you do, and in which case you're in luck. So I'm just going to hold it down and use that pin to roughly hold it in place. I'm going to jump right to my teal embroidery floss and stitch down this body. And I'm going to start just below where I want this tail to be attached. But I'll just start with a straight stitch going through the denim background in that fabric for the body. And then I'll just make a few stitches, again with the straight stitch, going around the perimeter of that body just to really emphasize that shape because I really like that rounded shape. And then as I get closer to the area where the fabric tail is, I want to really emphasize my stitches to actually go through that fabric tail. And here I stitched over that pin. I'll remove it and just continue. When I have a couple of stitches, I know that's going to really hold that fabric for the tail in place. I can always go back and add more stitches, but for now, I just want to continue all the way around that body. And again, these stitches emphasize the shape of that body, and they really draw the eye. They become a design element in themselves. Now when I get to the wing, I'm going to skip underneath the entire wing and just get to the front of that bird. And I'll continue with my stitches. I like to make all the stitches approximately the same size and spacing apart as well as evenly spaced from the edge of that fabric. It just looks a little neater. It doesn't have to be perfect either because it gives a handmade effect. And these birds are charming, so they're kind of interesting, imperfect, but very cute. Now if I made longer stitches, which I could have done, the curve wouldn't be quite as gentle. And if I used a stitch like the stem stitch or the chain stitch, it would be a very, very sweet and gentle curve. So really play around with the stitches that you like. The straight stitch is just my go-to stitch. It's very easy, it's simple, and it's classic. And I like the way that looks. So now depending on the way that I attached the body fabric, the angle that it was attached, that will really increase the likelihood of the bird looking like he's flying or sitting or standing. And it's really up to you what you want to achieve there. If you wanted to have really long legs on the bird, which is really cute, I'd obviously use a different formation of the fabric. I would have a lot more fabric below the bird. And I just think that's cute. You can, have the fab you can have the bird with short legs or le legs hanging out from flying. And this is where the possibilities of adding character and personality to your bird really begin to shine. Once we have the body, the wing, and the tail attached, 
this is where we start embellishing it. And just by the tilt of the beak, the length of it, whether it's short and stubby or long and thin, you get different effects and different feels. So I'll add my last stitch here, just a little tiny stitch, and just reevaluate where I'm at with the basis of my bird. Not off the thread on the back. And then just evaluate where I'm at with the bird. So I like the way that looks. I do like having a little dimension in the tail, but I do want it to be attached a little bit better. So I think I'm just gonna run a few stitches up either side of this little ruffle. So again, I'll go back to my yellow thread. I'll go to one side of that ruffle, coming right out at the tail area where it attaches to the body. Again, playing around with it, getting the right angle and just making maybe two stitches. And I like them to go out, not straight. And again, I could bring this as much as I wanted up here. I'm just gonna ruffle it a little more and I'm just gonna use my finger to hold it in place, folding that fabric. And with my needle, I'm gonna come down on this side and make a couple of stitches as well. This will add a little dimension to the tail, giving it a little texture. And then I'll knot that on the back. I'm gonna trim up any of these loose threads. And now I wanna start playing with my features. So I like to go right and add the eye and the nose next. And I, even though it's not necessary, I like to just sketch in the eye. And this helps me decide the nose. Now my nose can be long and thin, short rounded, short and triangle. I like to just sketch a teeny little nose. And I'm just gonna do a satin stitch for that nose. Now for the eye, again, I can decide, do I want a button? Do I wanna make a little French knot? Do I want just a satin stitch? And I think I'm gonna set the button aside for now. Stitch the nose, the beak here, and then decide. So I have my thread, which is just orange, and I chose a very bright orange, kind of to offset that bright tail. And I, what I like to do to do my satin stitch for the nose is I start at the furthest most point where the nose or the beak ends, and then I bring one straight stitch underneath that fabric for the body. And then from there, I'll come up very close to the body, just on that triangle that I sketched to make that beak shape. And so that first stitch, that long stitch, will be partly underneath that body. And I do that purposely so that there's really no denim of that background fabric exposed. I want that beak to look like it's part of the bird, not a, a secondary area. And then I'll just start stitching my stitch, making my stitches straight across, going over that line that I put down and creating that beak. Try and keep my stitches very close together. And when I get to the end, I can reassess my work and see if I missed any areas or if there's too much space. So I do see a little bit of space here and right here. So I'll just take my needle and thread and fill in those missing pieces. And again, the beak doesn't have to be perfect to look like a beak. It just has to be recognizable. I think it's most effective when it's a gradual increase in size from the tip to the base by the body, but it doesn't have to be perfect. And this is also a nice place to use different colors of your thread. So I can go with a darker orange closest to the body and work my way out with a lighter color closest to the tip. So there I'm starting to develop my bird. I have my beak and next I'll work on the eye. 
So to make the French knot for the eye, I'll take my needle with my embroidery floss knotted on the end of the needle with six strands of embroidery floss and I pull it through till it's taut. And then I'll wrap the thread around the needle three or four times, holding the part that I wrapped very close to the fabric. I'll bring the needle through very close to where I came in originally, pull my needle through, and then I'll gently pull it down until it catches on my finger. And then I'll just gently pull and allow the needle and the thread to pull itself tight. And then I can just play with it to round it out. And there I have a beautiful French knot to use for the eye of my bird. I'll knot the fabric on the back and then reevaluate again to see what I want to do to the bird. So now is a good time for me to just take my iron and erase any of that marker that remained. So I'll just press it down with a hot iron and it removes all of that ink. So that gives me a better idea of what I have before me. So right now is the time I want to decide if I want to do anything further to the bird to embellish it. Do I want to add legs or feet or anything like that? And I'm quite happy with the bird as it is. I'll show you some variations in a moment on the tail and adding some legs and feet, but for now I'm quite happy with this bird. The last thing I want to do though is embellish this piece. So for the way I embellish this piece, I like to add scraps of fabric and additional stitches all the way around. So now I went through my stash and I found some white lace that I think I want to use somehow on this piece because I like the way that looks. And I have my original fabric from the body and the wing and the tail, as well as some embroidery floss. And I also have this white button. I'm not really sure how I'll use it. One thing I like to always do on my birds is put a little heart on the bird somewhere. So right now I'll just play around with adding these pieces to find out what I'm going to make or how I'm going to embellish this. And it doesn't have to be a set thing. I can embellish it just sporadically even. So I think I'll just play around creating just a little edge to this piece. Maybe add something over here as well. And I'm just looking to play Maybe even cut up these squares to use those somehow. Oh, I know, I'll put the little button over here. Maybe right up top. In fact. So this is just the design process that I use. I just play around until I find something that I like. Now I want to find a place to put my heart I think I'll stitch it just right over here. So I think I'll actually move this and stitch the heart right over here. And it's just a little subtle thing. It's just something I like to do. So I have my pieces here, I'll pin them down and tack them down with some stitches. I might use some colored embroidery floss Again, picking up the colors from our design, and I can always throw in some stitches as I go. So I'll tack that down and show you my results. So here I've tacked down all the pieces. I've added some extra stitching because I think the stitching adds a lot of texture and it draws the eye. Now I also said I'd show you different tails and different birds that I added to these denim pages so that I could eventually make this book full of all these charming birds. So this is the one we did today in the video. I added my little stitched heart. I took the colors from the main bird and I just emphasized it with little collages on the sides. But let me show you all the other pages for this little book. So sometimes I have the birds going in a different direction, but for the emphasis on these little collages on the side, I usually take the colors from the bird or ones that coordinate nicely and I love to use different fabrics that have white in them. Now for this tail, I just did a series of loops of embroidery floss, two colors of pink that coordinate with the wings. As you can see with my beak here, it's a satin stitch but a loosely done one. So it's not a filled in stitch, but I still think it's effective. 
The next bird here, I took colors and fabric from the original bird. I have just a flattened heart for the tail. I used a very bright yellow, and then I stitched the word chick, just because I thought it needed something over here. On my next bird, I have that heart over here. I have just a little teardrop of fabric that matches the wing perfectly. And I used a pink beak. I thought that was cute, as well as a blue eye. I have a lot of texture here with different ruffles, big stitches that show a lot of contrast, and just some buttons that pick up the color from the bird. Now here I stitched another bird, blue and white. The tail is just folded fabric. It does not match directly with the wing, but it's a similar color family. Then I added a lot of lace and some stitching, some tabs, a found object, and just a piece of fabric with the word love on it that I added. I have a gradation for the beak from orange to yellow, and I think that came out very effectively. To attach the tail to the body, I just have a series of stitches here, and I like the way that looks. It echoes the eye, but it's still a little different. Continuing our theme with the birds, I have those loops on the tail, but I stitched them down this time instead of them leaving them free. I put a little pointy wing here for variation. I made a tiny little eye, and then I just have a simple collage offsetting the bird. I like the way that looks. I picture the bird landing in his little birdhouse, even though this isn't a birdhouse. And then lastly, for the cover of my book, my eventual book, I have something with the word birdie on it, but I picked up the colors from the bird itself. I have a larger eye, a red nose, because I thought that was a fitting. I echoed that over here. And then for the tail, I just did a series of stitches just to make it look very feathery. And I really like the way that came out. So now for this one, the one I showed you originally, I have lots of texture, lots of stitches, a suggestion of a body, not even using fabric at all, but just embroidery floss in stitches that encompass that body. And lastly on my fabric, I took a large piece of fabric so that I could make these long skinny legs. They match the color of the body. They're nothing realistic, a turquoise legged bird. It's got the little lace tail and really emphasis on the heart. Of course, if you want to, you don't even have to stitch the birds down. And here, I made a two-sided bird that you can hang. And I simply made both sides of the bird and then attached it together so that there was no really wrong side of the bird showing. So that's the basis for making this charming bird. I just use fabric, thread, and a little imagination. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up and be sure to subscribe. And give some ideas to the different personalities you can add to your bird. Thanks for joining me today.